everyone. Hi. Welcome to Brambleberry Cottage. So another week. Yes. A lovely, lovely autumn day. I mm. hope you're having the best day like we are. Um, the weather is perfect. Yes. Uh, the leaves are so beautiful, changing colors. Um, we took a beautiful drive today in our town and we drove and saw all the beautiful colors mm. of the leaves changing. Uh, we p picked pumpkins, we went for a hay ride. Nice day. Yes, it was. And this little place in town that we go to also has a cute little store. We loved it. It was a wonderful, wonderful day. Yeah. It's still beautiful. We're about two o'clock in the afternoon and it's still warm and lovely and there's no real chill. It's, it's just really right. nice. Great night for a bonfire. So I'm sure it's gonna be chilly later, so. Yes, yes, I'm very excited about that. Um, we we'll do some painting this week. Yes. We finally picked the paint color for our kitchen. So finally, that's finally, finally, yeah. After a very long time of that, whew, um, the great thing about it is, if you don't like the color, you can always change it. Right. But we did like the color as we saw it in the can, and we painted one wall to see and give it a couple days to see how we liked it with the different lighting. Yeah. And it looks like a win. It works. Um, so it's going with our beachy cottage feel. So we will be finishing that up, yeah. wrapping it up. We did some crafts. I did some crafts. I had so much fun. Um, it was a thing I haven't done in a really long time as the kids are much older now. I used to do that with the kids. Yeah. I used to be my daughter's Girl Scout leader and we would do that with Girl Scouts. I would do it with my own children. And we just had a great, great time. Um, and I got to relive that again. Um, which was fun. Yeah. I don't display a lot of crafts around the house anymore. Yeah. Um, but I did make these for my son to have a little decor in his room and also uh, give some to my daughter. Um, it's been a fun, fun time doing that again. Um, it's kind of like coloring in a coloring book to me. Um, it just reminds yeah. me of my childhood. It's just a lot of fun. Um, so yes, I got to do that this week. And we decorated. Um, like I said, we took a drive out today and we did some pumpkin picking and a hay ride and mm. all that fun stuff. Yeah. And we brought back some pumpkins. Um, I normally go a little more um, in depth with the decorating, but things are getting quite pricey these days and hard to find. So we're a little frustratingly in little spurts getting pumpkins and all kinds of things. I don't bother with corn stalks anymore or hay bundles um, just because they're expensive and they're not always easy to find. So what we did was gather some of our uh, ornamental grasses around mm. the yard and some goldenrod looking things that were growing. I really don't know what it is, but it looks like goldenrod and it's mm, pretty cool. On. And some other uh, cool flowers that just dried out and gave us the feel of like a fall, um, like bundle of right. whatever. And there's like a bee on your stuff. shirt that's it's, ah, hard to focus when the bee's around. Um, okay, so, um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, in about five seconds more, I would have been running and screaming, my <laughs> arms flailing. <laughs> I try to be friends with the bees, but they scare me a little. Um, anywho, so um, we did that, and uh, little pumpkins here and there, and like this plasticky, like jack-o'-lantern thing we had laying around that I had painted through the years, and just a little here and there, but um, nothing super exciting. I'm probably gonna make a little ghost, though. Yeah? Yeah, because it, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, very simple. Um, we have this little obelisk in the yard, and um, you just put a white sheet over it, some felt eyes, or, or even a Sharpie makes some eyes at a open mouth, and boom, you got a ghost. So, thinking See, about that, not sure. It might not be this week, but eventually. Um, so, we did that. And we, uh, well, we're, we did do that already, but we're going to do um, a uh, salsa verde, which is Sounds exciting. It is delicious. Come on, people. You got you have like a little harvest from your the last of your uh, vegetables, and you get um, some green tomatoes sometimes. You don't know what to do with it. Um, mm -hmm. And tomatillos, which was a big surprise in our garden this year. So I'm going to blend it together and make a fun salsa verde. So come along for that as well. I won't always post recipes, but I thought, why not? What the heck this why time? Not? Yeah. Um, so I guess that's it this week, isn't it? That's all we have. It is, <laughs> it is enough. Um, we're very busy lately, so we have a lot of crazy projects and um, all kinds of things going on. So 
because of that, um, we're going to keep it kind of simple this week. But uh, next week, we've got some big things coming up as well. Stay tuned for that next week. But this week, paint, crafts, decor, um, salsa verde, all kinds of wonderful stuff. Who knows? We'll Who see. Knows? We hope you're having a wonderful week and getting excited and ready for uh, Halloween and enjoying this beautiful, this gorgeous weather. I wish you could feel this. It's so beautiful. I hope nice. you're having this weather today and the beautiful sunshine. Um, come along. Join us this week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. to it a different look and then we had the cat so this was about the size we had before and this he made a little bit smaller so we could have a little friend so today we have those pieces of wood he had cut them uh, he no longer has a jigsaw so he has a bandsaw so he used a bandsaw in this case but he basically just uh, measured and cut uh, these angles to make look to make it look like ears pointy ears for cat this he had just rounded off. It's a little bumpy, but I kind of like the character to it. Um, some of the wood you do want to sand down as smoothly as you can. Some pieces of this wood are a little rough, and I'm okay with that. It gives it character. But if you have children around or you're just concerning you want just a more finished look, I would definitely go with a smoother, um, maybe a tougher grit, like a 220 grit sandpaper really sand it down and then take the 120 a finer grit and just really smooth it out even more to get all those little pieces that come up a little bit the paint will get it a little bit but it will be rougher we'll smooth it out a bit but it will be rougher so today I'm just using paint that I have laying around I do have regular black paint but I want it to be different today I used uh, black chalkboard paint as I told you before, when we redid our kitchen, we had we went chalkboard crazy. We had chalkboard refrigerator, we had a chalkboard a wall, and yes, we did use the chalkboard. Um, but so I still have some of this left. I will no longer be using it at this point anyway for anything. So I thought, why not? I will use it for my cats. And the white, the white I've been using for a lot around the house, just about everything lately, is the Valspar 2000. You can't see it right now, but it's the Valspar 2000. Um, 
we are going to start with the ghost. I did put just like a craft paper down, use cardboard, anything. That's just what I, I ended up looking for. Current. Want it to lay on that to dry it as well. I'm going to use a regular toothbrush. Actually, before I do that, I just want to stir it around, be sure, be sure it's mixed well. Okay, we're just going to on one side brush it out. This paintbrush has seen a lot. I think we're going to get rid of it after today. I'm just doing like a rough paint job, covering as much as I can. It's okay if some of the wood peeks through. It kind of gives you a nice rustic feel. You put on as much as you want, or as little as you want. So you want to get the bottom to seal it, especially like after this kind of dip it a little bit just to get in those grains at the bottom. So we're just doing one side for now. Get it to dry. If you don't put it on too thick, especially that first coat, which is really the best way to do it, it will dry within a couple of hours. So we're going to do that and leave that to dry. Some other craft paper that I laying around. Now we're going to tackle the cats. To have black cats because it is Halloween coming up and we have to have a black cat. And again, I'm using a chalkboard paint. This is still good, but I can see that we're getting to the end of this paint, so I'm glad I'm using that project. I have had it for a little while, maybe a few years. Paint essentially shouldn't last more than a year or two. However, if you have it stored in a nice environment, a nice uh, warm enough environment, not a hot environment, and certainly not a cold environment, and you seal it back properly, you should be able to have it for a few years. And the thing with paint is, use it up anyway. It just gets thick and yucky after a while. So um, this will be the last time I'm using this paint. It's a very, very simple craft, guys. We are not doing anything fancy to it. And I like the simple rustic. I'm just not doing the underside yet because we need to lay it down. Make your green, remember these, where they make the cuts. Before you make the cuts, you want to make sure you're kind of stippling it on so it gets into those little nooks and crannies in the green there. And again, I do like it to have like a rough texture because it makes it very rustic. Although I am learning to like I'm not just learning, I'm learning to love, really, the um, more classic, smoother lines to things, but I still like the rustic feel when it comes to crafts. Not very big on having crafty things around the house as much anymore, but I still love to make them, and I still love to create and give us gifts on the holidays, like especially Halloween. I do like to have little crafty things, but it's getting a little bit less and less now as my kids are getting older. I still go all out for Christmas though. That's my favorite time to decorate. I do love the Easter decor too. I'm not going too thick, but I'm going a little bit thicker because it's a little bit of whitewash this was from another project. You could sand all of that away, which we did sand it a bit, but I like seeing some of the light come through. Kind of neat. Look at the cat who's getting old, the gray hair. There. So we're going to 
let this first coat on the one side dry and then another half an hour to an hour. An hour would always be best, especially because we're starting to get cooler weather so it doesn't dry as quickly. But a nice day like today, we're in the low 70s, we have the windows open, it's a beautiful sunny day, we have uh, some nice crafts drying, it should dry within a half an hour. I'll check in a half hour but it possibly might be up to an hour. And then we'll flip it and we'll do the next coat. We'll do the first coat on the other side. So today I'm gonna to make, because we had in our garden, we harvested some tomatillos and they're starting to dry up. So I wanna start getting that moving. It's a green salsa, salsa verde. You guys have heard of it, I'm sure. Um, we're gonna clean this up um, in a strainer, wash them and rinse them. And then I'm going to roast them in the oven to get them browned and softened and ready to go. And then we'll start uh, cooking it. So here we go. We have to peel these papery tops off. And as soon as I start talking, my dog Bella decides to start eating. <laughs> so if you hear loud crunching in the background, that's her. Now tomatillos are usually quite large. Um, this is the end of the season, so they are very, very tiny. But we'll still be able to make a good recipe. And what I'll probably even add to these are some green tomatoes as well, because, uh, grape tomatoes, because I was at the end of the season and they were not ready yet. So, we are adding that to the recipe because it's green, it's supposed to be green. So perfectly ghoulish for October. In harvest season, this one's a little larger, but they do tend to be much bigger than that. And what's great about this tomatillo is we've been growing it for a few years, and this particular year we did not, but it must have seeded itself and surprised us in the garden with a surprise tomatillo plant. So that was exciting. I love when nature does that and the universe tends to reach out and give you a gift. Like a great tomatillo plant, full of beautiful tomatillos. Tiny, but really beautiful. They're so sweet. And they are sweet. Sweet meaning they were cute. But yes, they do have a sweet flavor. Yeah, how cute. I have my compost bin, my little bucket here. Then I can put the wrappers right away in that, but you could use a bowl or whatnot. If you have a composter, uh, you can, or a compost system of any kind, I would advise you to put those in there. The skin, the wraps here, these papery wraps. If not, um, I would put it in the trash. I don't know if it would go well in the garbage disposal, possibly, but I don't want to say that and then it doesn't go well. So, better safer than sorry. So, we peeled them all back. I added some green grape tomatoes and I'm taking off the little stems at the top. And once that's done, we're going to rinse. larger ones. This is a tomato here. These green tomatoes. And here's a tomatillo that's larger. Again, they are normally much larger. I just picked them when they were really tiny because I didn't want them to go to waste. They were a freebie from the universe and I appreciated that. A little gift. And I didn't want to waste it. So I picked them tiny. So you want essentially about, about a pound and a half of tomatillos and green tomatoes mixed. You can do that. I'm doing here. And you want to cut them in half. So 
so they roast really well. I'm going to let it get in the juices. You want it to brown. We're going to essentially broil it in a, in a sense, but I don't put it on a deep broil. What I like to do is put it on a high enough temp, about 425. You can go to 450 if you'd like. And just for about under 10 minutes, maybe 7 to 10. Keep checking on it. You have them roast and brown. As all the juices come out and gives it a nice flavor. A lot of these are, I think, are okay. These tomatillos. I think I'm going to just do the green tomatoes. So, I'm going to place about four cloves with your skin still on because they'll peel right out off after the skins. Let's just let it get in a lot of that garlicky flavor. You don't have to add garlic if you don't want to. And because I'm talking and doing and not paying attention, my tomatoes are going everywhere. But, all right, there we go. And then, place my tomatoes in here. They're so tiny. My daughter used to, when she was little, pop these in her mouth like candy, constantly. pretty good right there, but I might add a few more. I do have a lot of green tomatoes. Um, it's just that time of year where it's just, it's not done growing, but Mother Nature doesn't let us keep going. It's ready for the fall. I want it to change. So in doing that, we have to kind of be creative. A lot of the larger tomatoes this year. We did a lot of the uh, great tomatoes. So I just felt like being different. I'm not a big tomato person. I can't actually digest. Um, I have a really bad time with heartburn, and because of that, um, I can't take the acidity of the tomato too much. So I tend to go for sweeter varieties like yellow varieties. Um, and in little bits and pieces. I can't have too much of it. But I do like to save the great tomatoes for special recipes and I like to have it every now and then. We are ready. I'm going to leave it as it is, but the cut side down, you want to make sure they're placed down on. Um, so it gives it a nice brown on the tops. It may stick a little bit and hopefully it won't be too much. Okay, we are ready to go. Place it in the oven. We'll start with seven minutes, and we'll keep checking it. When we check it and it looks good, we'll take them out and we'll put them in the pro food processor with other ingredients. Wait and see, it's gonna be delicious. Okay, so now we're going to do a half cup of onion. Your compost full there. Right by you. I'm going to chop it properly because it's going to chop a bit in the food processor as well. I've noticed a trick too. Um, go quickly so you don't tear up. Um, when you're tearing up, know that that's a very good onion. It's very strong. Um, but what I like to do is go quickly, and I'm just going to go down the long way, and I just, normally I would cut in half, but I'm not going too fine because it's going to chop a lot in here. But when you have clean utensils, rinse them frequently. Rinse your onion every now and then, and sometimes even wearing some glasses or sunglasses will help. So we're going to go with a half cup of onion. You go a little over because, gee, there's a little bit of that onion left. It's okay. So we want to not waste. You could save it for something else, but I don't generally like to have things like tomatoes in the refrigerator for long. Okay. And also, onion flavor is not a bad thing. Alright. Place that in here. A small
small onion is probably about a half cup to three quarter cup. So if you don't feel like measuring it out, you can just kind of think of that. Half cup to three quarter cup. Just rinse, rinse them frequently because we don't want that, our eyes to burn. Then you use two jalapeno peppers. For me, I cannot handle even the mildest of jalapeno peppers. So, we don't like things generally that spicy here. Um, so, I tend to use a more milder pepper, a red or yellow. I'm keeping it yellow. I'm keeping it yellow because I want the color to not change too much. I still want it on the green side. Pull out the seeds the best you can and rinse out the rest. Check on our tomatillos. They're still not quite burned, um, charred on top. So I'm going to do another two minutes and we'll check it again. I like to not waste, so I do cut the tops a little bit. They're in looking good condition. And I'm just going to roughly chop them. A lot of the spiciness does not come from the seeds. Believe it or not, it's from the white flesh part inside the pepper. You see that white flesh here? It tends to give you a little bit of that spiciness. Again, this is a yellow pepper. It's not too bad, but it also isn't the best texture in the world to have that lingering, so I tend to cut that off. But yes, the seeds can make it very spicy too. But really, the flesh is where a lot of that spice comes from. So I've heard. So we have our yellow pepper and our onion, and I'm going to put in a tablespoon of fresh lime juice. Now, I like to use the real lime when I'm going to bind, and I ran out of lime. And I ran out of limes, so I'm using the real lime juice. The best is always to use it from a lime. So here we go. We're going to check on our tomatillos and our green tomatoes and our garlic. We're getting there. I feel like we might be roasted pretty good. So, I'm going to shut that down and add that. Let it cool slightly. While that's cooling, we've got that. We're going to add a little bit of uh, I almost said sugar, salt. I like to use a little bit of the pink Himalayan salt. It's a little bit better for you. It's got a lot of wonderful things. I do about three times around, pinch it in my finger go. Obviously, you can use any salt you want. So, that's what I'm using. Okay, so, we put a teaspoon of dry basil in. I use this sometimes instead of cilantro. Um, number one, I'm partly Italian, so I like my Italian herbs and spices. However, um, I'm not a big super fan of cilantro, so it can tend to be a little soapy. I don't mind it sometimes, especially in Mexican dishes, and I know this is a Mexican dish, but this in particular, it's just too much, so I use the dry basil. But by all means, use cilantro. You can use fresh cilantro, that's probably the best, and I would use, I don't know, about four to five leaves, um, not leaves, stems, and then cut the leaves and throw them in. I'm just using, you can also use fresh basil. It's just that time of year where I've harvested all my basil and it's gone. So that's all I have left is the dry. So, anywho. Now, um, that garlic that I was roasting, I'm just cutting off the offending parts. Sometimes you get like a nick or a bruise on, on that and you can peel it away once it's roasted and cool. Make sure it's cool so you don't burn your fingers. It should peel right off. I've let mine sit a little bit, so it's not peeling off as easily as it normally would. But once you cut it, it 
should start to come apart. And I'm just adding that garlic to my mix here. Okay, so I'm almost done here. Just peeling up our garlic. And I have a tip for getting that smell off your fingers. Yeah, yes, it does work. So Nice and roasted, you can smell it. Mmm, nice flavor. That roasted flavor. It's such a lovely smell to me. These are really small, so they can really stick to that pan. If you have a good roasting pan, it should be okay. I'm going to soak my pan with water. Hopefully, we'll get all that off. Alright, so my little tip. soak on your hands, rub it around, and then if you're lucky at a stainless steel sink or anything stainless steel, rub your hands, your fingers, everywhere onto the sink or the stainless steel item. It will, just not a nice piece, but it will take that smell right off. Wash your hands again, if you're just rubbing the sink or whatever, and voila. It will absorb the odor and it will neutralize it. Pretty cool, huh? I'm not sure where I got that tip. Probably my grandmother, as she was pretty darn smart. So now we have all the ingredients. In fact, I will just add a little bit of black pepper. Give it a little bit of a little bit of a punch, a little bit of a kick. Okay, so just as I was starting to do this, my uh, food processor, which has been on the fritz, has decided to now no longer work. So luckily I have a blender and I'm using a smaller part of the blender to have two sizes. I'm going to um, make it like a mushy salsa. We, you can have some chunks in it if you prefer it more chunky. I just prefer it to be more of a smooth with just maybe a few chunkiness to, bits to it. Oh, I can smell that aroma. Mm. So beautiful, the smell. So we're going to, going to put that in the lovely bowl. We're going to pour that into the bowl. It's going to look maybe a little bit like baby food. Um, I promise you it will not taste that way. It's delicious. I would like to know the person who thought it was clever to make a square blender. Not clever. Very frustrating. So here you have your finished salsa verde. Can you see it? So, you want to serve that with chips. I'm going to take a little bite. It's garlicky, oniony. It's got that little bit of a punch, a little bit of a kick without being super spicy. And there's just a slight bit of sweetness to it. The more mature the tomatillos are, the better it will be the more sweet it will be. But I do like this. Um, I'm going to wrap it up with a plastic wrap over the bowl and I will serve it to my guys later. It's very tasty, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we did that underside. And now we're going to do this side, the first coat. Any spots that you think need a little touching up, this would be a good time. Going to go, this is probably the back sides, just you know, so pick the better parts of the wood that you like. Um, so, because this is the underside now, even though I know I just said the underside, I'm sorry, 
Um, this part is the underside for me. Um, I chose to do this last because I'm really going to cake it on. I'm not going to bother with a second coat um, on this because I want to be done with that so I can get on with the other parts of it. So I'm putting it on a little bit thicker to really get on those edges. I'm discovering as I age, I tend to be a messy painter. So you will see little marks on me um, within minutes. So don't mind this. I hope it doesn't offend some of you that are not as messy. Sometimes it feels like I'm being a kid again and I'm just finger painting, right? How fun was that? Another thing I used to do with my kids, which I loved and I really miss, and they loved it too, was pouring shaving cream, like that foamy white shaving cream onto the table. And believe it or not, it deep cleans your table. So okay it cleans their kids are cleaning and you don't even realize it um they don't realize it but they're also having fun and they would use their fingers it's almost like finger painting but they would make little shapes and you know fun things inside the with their fingers inside the uh, i almost said whipped cream shaving cream and it would clean off your table as well crazy of course i cleaned it after again but it was fun and we would just do that for hours usually on those snow days from school. Those are the best times to do that kind of stuff after they were playing outside, of course. But sometimes you just feel so cold and you just want to be inside. Or maybe it's too hot in the summer and you don't know what to do. That, literally, it cleans off really well, guys, so it's not a big mess. Even if they get it all over themselves, it's just going to clean right off. All right, so we've got our first coat on the second side. And I caked it on a little bit more, made it a little bit thicker, so hopefully it will not need more than a first coat. I like it, again, a little rustic, so um, I don't care if it shows a little bit of the wood. That's up to you. You can do two coats if you like. I'm just personally doing it this way. All right. And then we come and check it again in another half hour. So I flip them over, and I'm about to do another coat. These honestly couldn't be more simple to do and cut, um, but they're so cute. Okay, so I'm just getting one last coat, second coat, and last coat on that one side, and I'm going to do the face. And we'll see how when it comes out, if I want to sand it down a little bit, we'll see from there. The chalkboard paint with a lot of black paints, those style paints. I notice they have like a bluish tinge. They look so neat and shiny when they go on. But when they dry, they turn out to be a really nice deep black. Okay, so now I'm going to make a face. I'm going to make him a winking silly ghost. So we're going to, in pencil, just trace out. Make it like a little circle here and then I'm going to make like a little curve and then a curvy line at the bottom as well. Almost like an animal beak to make a little wink. And then I'm going to do kind of upside down or like a V. Make like a V. And then maybe like a little tongue here. So it's kind of like you know that kind of a Winky smile. I think it's cute. Okay. So I'm going to take a, like an artist brush, and I'm going to trace around the circle. Don't worry about if it's too fine or too thick. Um, do what makes you comfortable. But the finer it is, or the pointer it is, it's probably a little easier to use. I'm going to a little thick, but I don't want it to be too thick where it won't dry fast enough. As it dries, we can add more layers. So don't worry if it doesn't go in perfectly well. You can also, if you want to, use a black sharpie too, if you want to be fine. We're going to do the mouth, the smile. We're going to come in with the pink for the tongue. So I'm going to mix. 
like a little gooey and thick, just kind of wipe it off on the plate. And it does that, especially if it's been sitting around for a while. You can always add more. You can go and sit around and see how you like it first. I think I have pink that I like. Just so you get an idea of what looks like. Look how cute he is. And now we're going into the white paint again for the cat eyes. Now I made little googly eyes on my last cat, but this one I wanted to do a little differently. This one we're going to do a little line, and I'll show you in a second. A line up, going straight across, and a line at a diagonal will kind of give like a little pinky. I'm also going to give it a little circle at the bottom so it's more like the eye, and just a slight partial circle here so you see a little bit more of the eye shape. A little circular model. It's a little expressive face. And then on this one I think we'll go a little more traditional. A little circle on each side, like a half circle. Close it off at the top. Not totally round, but like a half circle. Kind of a squiggly line of face. And give him a ton to stick out to. That's so ideas. Now in the center of the going to add a little bit of a black dot so it looks like he's looking sideways. See that? And I will do the same here but more in the center. Where he looks kind of angry. He doesn't really look like he's winking, but I like it. It's spooky. So we will touch it up and refine it a little bit. But that's pretty much it. A very simple and fun craft. You can do it with kids as well. Or just keep it to yourself. And there you go little fun crafts for Halloween. This is where I just come in and refine. It's a very thin, thin, thin brush. You absolutely can use craft paint. I'm just using the paint that I have right here, which is regular. So I just straighten out my circle a little bit more, and I just make sure there's not too many jagged edges. I don't have a lot of use for crafts anymore as I don't use them around the house, but boy, they make me so happy to do. They're so much fun. I don't really display a lot of crafty items anymore. I did when the kids were young, but... All right, and there you have it. We have our cute little winking ghost. Now, you can put something on the bottom to make it stand better, but I usually lean it against a wall or, you know, whatever. But that's our ghost. A kind of goofball cat. He's not all there, that cat. <laughs> and this one's a little bit shocked and angry. I don't know. He's kind of cute. He may change, but aren't they cute? Happy Halloween.
So we just went pumpkin picking and we're going to place it. So I'm still deciding where I want to put it. So I'm going to try here because it's a little bare on the stairs here. So I think we're going to place for now. What do you think, guys? Is that all right, you think? Beautiful. Yes. All right, maybe the um, little white one. I'm not sure, because I like the idea of stacking them, too. But I'm not sure if I want to stack them. Ooh. It's kind of interesting. That kind of works. So these dried, these dried grasses here are from our yard. We had a uh, like a goldenrod looking type of thing growing really tall. And then we had some grasses from our ornamental grass and it kind of dried up. Gave, we were just trying to come up with a fall, um, uh, like a, what am I trying to say? What word am I trying to say? A oh, fall uh, stock, sorry. not... Oh, corn stalk type yeah, of uh, Yeah, I know, but I'm not, yeah. So a fall corn stalk here, um, but we didn't want to spend for corn stalks because they're A, they're hard to find, and B, they're very expensive. Um, and they really mess up the car when you just have a car. So we gathered some of our things together. Why not do it for free? And use some rope to tie it together. It's kind of getting, you know, getting older and it's falling apart a little bit, but that's okay. But here's kind of a, a simpler solution. We'll be decorating as well as the weeks progress uh, for the actual spooky trick-or-treating. But for now, we just wanted a simple uh, little design here. And then over here, we just gathered another pumpkin. Just one little pumpkin. I'm still not sure where I want to put it. But for now, it's going to stay here to dress up this little area here. I'd love to get one to match that side, but for now, we'll leave it at that. I've noticed a few things. Our begonias are finally getting to the point where they're getting maybe done for the season. And then our mint is starting to get there. Our thing here is still nice and full. However, the uh, flowers are starting to die out, but the other side is doing fantastic. So isn't that funny how that happens? It's probably time to do more of a fall color here but I really like this I really like how it's still going you hate to tear it apart when it's still growing well but anyway that's a little bit of our little more decor um, we do a little bit in stages because it gets very pricey everyone it's not easy to find anymore the um, the pumpkins and the corn stalks and the um, hay bundles so when you do it's very very pricey so it's just better to do it in stages and also it gets exciting each thing that you add to your porch for the season so there we go just for now just a little simple uh, decor there uh, we'll be adding more as time goes on thank you just a little walk to see what the garden looks like in the fall things are dying out but they still look pretty cool like the hostas are getting a yellowy leaf which it's getting to that point now where they probably have to be cut down, but I really like how they're getting the yellow on the tips. It's very fall-like. Can you see the trees? They're starting to change color. Our apple tree is losing leaves. And the leaves coating the walkway. This would be a nightmare for a lot of people. To me, it's so pretty to have this beautiful brick walk filled with colorful leaves. And we're gonna get a little bit of our pond in there because it's about to be closed down for the season after this weekend as we're probably going to start getting frost. So that'll be the end of that. It's a good windy day. We get a lot of debris, but it's really pretty. And we have still have frogs in there. I don't know if there are any at this moment, but we had just gotten a handful of water hyacinths and water lettuce, and look how much it's multiplied. Isn't that pretty? And our beautiful waterfall. That's getting to the point where we have to say goodbye for the season. One more weekend. There is a frog. frog. <laughs> We've 
We've seen as many as like eight at once, yeah. <laughs> I think. Not so many right now, but there's one. Look at how beautiful these trees are. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Just a beautiful spot for us to sit. We have our grass area is starting to come in a little, but it's going to have to be tackled in the spring. Yeah, it, we planted the seed a little bit too late. It got too cold too quickly, so we're going to have to reseed again in the spring. But, but it's coming. It's, it's coming, coming together. Along. We may even succumb to some sod, um, but we're not sure. Right now, it's, uh, it's come back a little. There will be a lot of leaf cleanup soon, but for now, I, I really like the look of it, with the leaves falling down on the yard. And I say it's time for a fire tonight. Ooh. Let's show our little secret garden over there. Hello, Bella. Bella's very happy today. Look at our pretty um, mm. blueberry bushes have started to turn color. They're so pretty, even in the fall. Isn't it pretty with all the hostas changing color? Our mums are starting to die out because of the frost. As you can see in that planter there, they're not doing so great. Uh, not so much here either, but they're better. This is a better area here. But we still have our raspberry bushes and they might need to be trimmed a bit. still have that fence area to do which will be coming up next week or the week after probably in a couple weeks it takes time to have delivery but we'll be fixing up the last of the fence around and then we have our marigolds are still hanging in there and our mint is still hanging in there and that little fertilizer plant there is hanging strong we took down the gazebo top which hopefully in the future next year we'll be able to build a permanent one but yeah you see the colors on the hill uh, it's a lovely time here in autumn hope you enjoyed our little tour here in the autumn time at the cottage at Brambleberry Cottage and we hope you're having a lovely autumn